Hello and welcome to Stratford-on-Avon Racecourse where it's time once again for the International Campervan Show and the Adventure Overland Show. Just like last time, a load of van YouTubers had their own section at the racecourse on the tarmac just in front of the grandstand. And it was a busy section too, more so than in September when the event was last held. Van after van after van, and these are just the YouTubers. The entire racecourse was also full of vans and motorhomes from folk who are less inclined to film their every move. A party was in full swing that Thursday afternoon, it being the first day of a long bank holiday weekend to mark the Queen's 70th Jubilee. She even put in an appearance, albeit in cardboard form. The YouTubers sat and stood and chatted and ate, amongst them famous faces like Ads and Zoe from Herman Hits the Road, and the legend that is Greg Virgo. Some, as you will have noticed, dressed up for the occasion. Others marked the Jubilee in a more subtle manner. Yes, that is Buckingham Palace on his head. Party organiser Steve Radford showed his squirty cream skills and we all devoured Jubilee cake. We were well fed and watered. Good morning. It is Friday morning. The show doesn't officially open to the public until tomorrow, so it's open over the weekend. But you can, if you want, come and park up for camping for several days in advance of that. And many, many people have done show. The whole of the Stratford Racecourse is packed with vans and motorhomes and tents of all shapes and sizes. It's just before 10 o'clock in the morning. There is a wonderful smell of bacon pervading the air as the campers get up and have their breakfast. I just saw Steve Radford come by and I swear I saw him putting squirty cream onto a plate of food. So that's at breakfast time. There really is no accounting for taste. Who knows what the day holds? Let's go and find out. 10 o'clock isn't exactly early, but with no reason to rise, the concourse was largely deserted. Just a handful of traders opposite getting ready for the day with trailer campers and VW conversions. A fellow YouTuber was seemingly unimpressed with me spoiling their shot and shut up shop until I moved out of the way. Her Majesty, meanwhile, was taking up van life. I tried out a couple of different foldable electric bikes. These are immense fun, though they can zoom rather fast. Over at Mr and Mrs Radford's brand new and immense nine metre long motorhome, Steve was showing off his new battery bank. We've got 960 amp hours of lithium on there, so what do you reckon? Hopefully that's enough. But it does enable us to run the air conditioning when off grid for up to 16 hours, so without sun. You'd be right in guessing Steve is a born salesman and deal maker, his stash of Victron gear and those lithium batteries coming from an arrangement made with Nottingham based firm EcoTree Lithium. As it happened, they were exhibiting right opposite where I was parked, so I did go and have a chat with them about my plan to go gas-free in the van and use induction cooking. So we may be coming to an arrangement about some bits of kit too. Essentially, a whacking great lithium battery to support the power draw. But it was time to look around the show, and whilst the design and colour scheme aren't to my taste, these bell tents looked interesting. Camping has never seemed so glamorous. I think Batman must have misplaced his bat bike. Forget the e-bikes, this looks like great fun. OK, it's nothing to do with camper vans, but this is. At Campervan Converters Bobble Vans, I found a clever water heater that uses your existing air heater. This is an affordable diesel powered air and water heating system. We use a diesel heater, the air comes through a heat exchanger which is here, pump the cold water through, hits the hot air, heats the water in the tank, um, about a third of the price of the equivalent diesel powered trimmer. In short, the hot air from your heater goes through a Y-shaped diverter that you can adjust for heating or hot water or both. 
The hot air goes over the fins in this heat exchanger, while cold water runs through the fins. Thus, the water gets warmer. The water recirculates through this 10-litre cylinder, which is thickly insulated and also has a 12-volt electric heater as an option. It's all controlled by this unit. You can't actually see this on camera, but that is lovely and warm. And that's only been running about 15, 20 minutes now. And it really does work. The, the hot air coming out the heater is about 120 degrees. So if you combine that with 20 degree water, then it's going to heat it pretty quickly. Other newfangled tech on display included this tiny electric truck. This is genuine, it's not a toy. Two adults can, just about, squeeze in the cab and it's road legal. Standard range is 60 miles, but there's a lithium battery 100 mile option. And they do a car version too, which reminds me a lot of my old smart car, if someone stuck a Jeep front end on a smart car. Very smart car like at the back with that tailgate and tiny boot. The battery pack goes under the seats. Of course, come the zombie apocalypse, something like this will probably be a more common sight. Splattered in genuine zombie blood, it's perhaps a warning of what's to come. But what turned people into zombies? Perhaps the same thing that made this giant spider, no doubt, some sort of radiation. Customization was certainly the order of the day. This cow-themed van towing an unusual micro-camper behind it. Seemingly the rear half of... Well, actually, I'm not sure what car it is. Maybe a Ford? Anyone know? And this one speaks for itself. There was a whole section devoted to self-built vans of all shapes and sizes. And so many more YouTubers. Surely only at this kind of event would you get sage advice from a cushion. Back near my van, old and new, as the blue van is entirely electric. Do you know what the most dangerous thing in the world is? I'll tell you, it's selling your boat and having the proceeds all sitting in your bank account. Because on the long lonely nights you start browsing Auto Trader yeah. and looking at the motorhomes and thinking, I could afford one of those. And I was doing that just the other night when I spotted a motorhome by um, Benimar, I think the manufacturer is, and it's called a Milio or Milio. And I thought, I really like that. It's got all the features I want with a drop-down bed and a compact size and so on. And lo and behold, what did I spot here at the Stratford show but pretty much almost exactly the same model I was looking at on Auto Trader. So the owners have very kindly said I can have a look round. Here it is, a Benimar Milio 286. Unusually, for a European-made van, it has the door on the UK side. And as you come in, look at all that lovely lounging space. Up above, the bed, so no wasted space on that either. It just drops down electrically. The kitchen's decent and there's enough space to stand and use it. Plus, good cupboards above. The fridge is tall and thin and recessed and has an extra compartment at the base for your drinks. The bathroom's in there. And at the back behind this door is a garage area, which these owners have made into a separate bedroom for their child, who loves it. They're on YouTube too, here's their channel. The wind was keeping the flags fluttering, while the campers were keeping the beer flowing. At the Adventure Overland part of the show were lots of these, Trucks with wheels as tall as you or I, ready to take on the world's toughest tracks. Would you like to see inside one? OK then, there's a bed across the back. A very compact kitchen next to the door, with an oven opposite. There's a loo and shower in there. And the lounging area is two seats facing each other, 
with a slot in the floor for a table leg. Like a capsule in the ISS, there's a tiny hatch through to the command module. Not tough enough for you? Try this, which isn't a camper, but would be fun to drive if rather uncomfortable, I suspect. And look, you could take it on the canals too. Now that's alfresco dining in style. Also stylish, American school buses. And this was a glorious splash of colour. It is Saturday morning, the first day of the show being open to the general public, but I must have really misread the weather forecast. I thought it was all supposed to be sunshine for several days. And it is overcast, it's blowing a gale out there. I'm not sure many members of the public are going to want to have a, a day out in this. But I suppose I shall sit in the van with many cups of tea and see if anyone turns up. Of course they did. They're not going to be put off by a bit of drizzle. Gradually the show became busy and I spoke to several lovely viewers during the afternoon. It's coming up to four o'clock now, Saturday afternoon, and that is actually it for me from the show. I've got to go and visit a friend over in Wales, so I'm about to head off and hopefully not run many people over on the way out of here. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.